morning, everybody. Oh, it's not a black church. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> I have the distinct pleasure of saying a few words about my good friend, Issa. I first met Issa in 2012 on Twitter. Rest in peace. Um, <laughs> Because much like many black girls like me who engulfed her web series, The Misadventures of Awkward Black Girl, I felt, yes, yes. I felt seen by her work, I felt understood by her voice, and I felt validated by her quirky and slightly ridiculous sense of humor. So what do you do when you feel like you know someone? You send them a tweet and you say, hey girl, I'm in LA, we should totally link up. <laughs> because that's normal, I highly recommend it, y'all. <laughs> and to my surprise, Issa slid in my DMs and then invited me to an actual wind down at her place. And I was like, dang, this Twitter thing really worried. Again, gone too soon, gone <laughs> too soon. But when I got to her place and her friends were like, so how y'all know each other? And I mentioned the little blue, blue bird and Issa was like, girl, that is crazy. I would never invite somebody I just met off the internet. And I was like, you right. So how do we know each other? <laughs> <laughs> and that's when Issa shared that she had been following me and my then budding comedy career on Facebook and, I, and thought that I was really funny. And back then I was shocked to find out that somebody that I admired was also admiring me. And even though she was the one, even though she was the one with the show and a whole production under her belt, but after five seasons of Insecure and doing life with her as her friend, both on and off the screen, I am no longer shocked. That is the Issa Rae MO. She is notorious for keeping her ears to the streets with a K. <clears throat> for identifying new talent and for opening doors of opportunity to people like myself who, at the time of my very first audition for the role of Molly, had very little acting experience, had no agent or manager, but who now, as you heard, has an Emmy nomination. Hello, won't God do it? <laughs> that is the power of an Issa Rae. It is befitting that she is being awarded with the Equity in Entertainment Award, considering that it recognizes a woman who amplifies the voices of underrepresented communities in the entertainment industry. I stand here as one of those voices that Issa has helped to amplify, but I'm not alone. A few years ago, Issa began a program on her YouTube channel called Short Film Sundays, which highlights, as you guessed it, short films by black creatives that was released on Sundays. Let me pause here to say, um, for all of her magnificence, when it comes to naming her projects, <laughs> mm, if there is one thing Issa Rae is, it is literal, y'all. <laughs> insecure, what's that about? Uh, it's a show about a black girl who um, is insecure. <laughs> rap shit, oh, just some shit about rap. <laughs> a black lady sketch show. <laughs> and let's not forget Color Creative. That is Issa's management company dedicated to representing creatives of color. <laughs> <Girl>. <laughs> At least she's consistent. Her next projects are entitled A Seat at the Table, Cat in the Hat, <laughs> Dora the Explorer, which chronicles the adventures of a fringed Bob Latinx youth who enjoys exploring. <laughs> but jokes aside, platforms like Short Film Sunday weren't just a place for inclusive and fresh content to be uploaded. They were pipelines for creatives who, who needed an avenue to bypass the old gatekeepers of Hollywood so they too could be seen and to have their own voices. Creators like the Ebo Sisters, whose short film, Hung for Jesus, I first watched on Issa's channel, which then turned into a feature film and that debuted at Sundance this year and sold for over $8 million. Wow. That is the power of an Issa Rae. When her deal with Warner Brother, when her deal with Warner Media Discovery, AT&T, SoFi Stadium, I don't know who owns us. Um, <laughs> T-Mobile, I don't know, again. Um, 
when her deal was announced, it included a provision. If y'all hear, I'm sorry. <laughs> My check's still clear. God bless it. Um, it <laughs> When her deal was announced, it included a provision for ESA to identify new and diverse talent with authentic perspectives. When I read that text, when I read that, I sent ESA a text and I was like, so basically, they're just paying you to do what you've been doing. I was gonna keep doing, and she wrote back, yeah, girl. <laughs> In an industry that prides itself on being cutting edge and forward thinking, sometimes it's a little backwards. And dare I say, a bit lazy. It requires true risk takers like Issa Rae, who aren't afraid to be rooting for everybody black or to take a stab at making a novice into a household name. There are a few things you can bet that Issa Rae will always do, like being found at a party drinking Secco out the bottle <laughs> or being found at the same party desperately trying to avoid small talk with people, hence the Secco. But what stands out most for me is her unfailing support of the marginalized, her extreme selflessness, her dogged belief that everyone can win and people of color should have the same opportunity to fail and be given another chance at success, because that is true equality. Another admirable quality Issa possesses is her dedication to protecting the authenticity, the authenticity of our stories. One instance that stands out vividly to me is when we were shooting the last episode of season one of Insecure. There was a scene that was set in Inglewood, but to save time and money, a producer, who shall remain unnamed, was pushing hard for us to shoot in Pasadena. <clears throat> she wanted to shoot cheat Pasadena for Inglewood because what's the difference? I mean, they'll never know. They'll never know. Even though we were a new show and Issa was in a new partnership with HBO and she desperately wanted to keep all parties happy, uh, and she desperately wanted to keep all parties happy, I still remember her drawing a line in the sand in that moment and say, people either portray South LA for drugs or violence and I wanna show the beauty of it and you want us to do this in Pasadena? Nah, 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 F that. And guess what? Everybody figured it out, y'all. And we shot the scene in Inglewood and for five seasons, Issa single-handedly put a spotlight on the many wonderful eateries, small businesses, and neighborhoods in South LA. She was so good at it. She was so good at doing that, that gentrification soon followed. <laughs> Randy's Donuts is now Ryan's Donuts and black people now live in Pasadena. So <laughs> that too is the power of an Issa Rae. Thank you, girl. Um, <laughs> recently, I listened to Issa's episode of Meghan Markle's podcast, Archetypes, and when asked what three words she would use to describe herself now, Issa took a beat before responding with confident, loyal, and free. And I could not agree more. The once awkward black girl is now a confident black woman, gracing the covers of magazines, but remains loyal to the community who gave her a voice and uses both her creative and personal freedom to usher in the next generation of unique visionaries. 